the Tandy one. We're in a nightclub in, in Manchester. I think we were dressed as the Beatles, you know, the old Sergeant Peppers. There was four of us, me, Les Chapman, James Black and someone else. Robbie Fowler, Mac and Mac were army men, if I remember. I can't remember what Tandy was dressed as, but like all the players were there, fancy dress. And we were on the booze all day, Sunday morning. So all on the booze. Um, and then I think poor Bosfeld or Fowler started it, but they were all in fancy dress in this bar and they started setting each other's costume alight. So it was the seniors who started just burning the edge of it or whatever. And it quickly, in five or 10 minutes, it went round the whole group and then it stopped. And then there was a karaoke and people were singing. And then I'd burnt Tandy's costume. So someone had got me and I'd ended up getting Tandy back. Not No malice in it. He didn't have the opportunity to get me back. So everything gets calmed down. Lighters are confiscated off everybody, right? By the security. We have a karaoke, carry on drinking. This is like three or four in the afternoon. Now, six o'clock, we've all gone, we're going for a team meal and you had to go and change out your fancy dress to get changed into your smart casual. So we go back to the hotel, change out the fancy dress. This meal still boozing. Seven or eight o'clock now, we're in a nightclub. Now, Danny Mills, who was our right back at the time, had gone as Jimmy Savile. So I was walking around dressed as Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Unappropriate now, <laughs> as you can imagine. Right, no, you wouldn't no. do it now. But loads, <laughs> loads did go as Jimmy fucking Savile in the fancy dress, didn't he? Fucking crazy nonce. Um, <laughs> and um, um, so we're in this nightclub at eight o'clock, all in our civvies. And Danny Mills is still smoking a cigar. So we're just sitting at the table talking and all that. And I always remember he had this like, white nylon fucking Prada t-shirt on like just dead plain t-shirt I just remember sitting here talking like across the, like a glass table like this and had an ashtray in and I thought the ashtray moved but it was actually stuck to the table Millsy sitting here smoking a cigar Sean Mike Phillips somebody else here yeah, and I'm sitting here and like everyone just mingling around in this bar and I just remember thinking what the fuck's that and I've looked like that and it's just a light here and my t-shirt's on fire like it's like obviously flammable material it's on fire like, so I've had to like rag it off and stump it out. And as I've looked like that, Tandy's, Jamie Tandy's standing here. Now I know I've set fire to his fancy dress costume four hours earlier. So he's obviously got me back, but I'm in my normal clobber. So I'm f burnt now, got my top off. It's burnt my whole top. So I'm now needing to go home and get changed. And there's, a, there's an ashtray. So I've gone for the ashtray and I couldn't get the ashtray off the table. So I've managed to take Millsy's cigar off it. So as I, as I've, turned Tandy's standing right next to me but he's looking the other way as if by the way I haven't done that so for some bizarre reason unknown to me to this day I thought it'd be a fantastic idea as a payback to him to stump the cigar out on the back of his head all right that was me logic makes no sense now but at the time a burn for a burn he's getting this on the back of his head as I've gone like that to stick it on the back of his head he's naturally felt me coming and turned towards me and it's managed to graze his eyelid all right He's gone down, as you would if somebody fucking grazes your eyelid. I haven't, think how hard it is if someone moves towards your eye with the finger, you're moving. But anyway, grazes eyelid, stupid thing to do. Tandy's in this all-players party with his brother. He's brought his brother to the party. So Tandy and his brother scarper off to the toilets. He's had this cigar put out on his head. Danny Mills is going to me, what the fuck have you done? Macher and uh, Fowler now, like, what's going on? We're all bevied. I'm like, listen, he fucking set fire to my shirt. So I've just fucking stumped a cigar out on him. I don't know, I've coughed him in the eye. So I've just gone like that and as I've done it, he's turned. So Sylvan Distan's our captain at the time. Big Sylvan's come over and I got on great with Sylvan. He's gone, fucking hell, what have you done? I'm like, I think I'm in the right here. So I'm half fuming. I'm after filling Tandy in. I'm still after punching his head in for setting fire to me. So he's gone, you better come and sort this out. So I'm like, the, the red mists now come down and I'm like, fucking hell, some, some serious must have happened here. So I walk along with Sylvan to go and make sure Tandy's all right. To, he's gone in the toilet so as I'm walking and I get to the toilet there's like a walkway of about 20 yards from like the toilet walkway to the toilet door and but it was like lit up it was fucking when I think back to it now it's like it was almost like it was meant to be so it's like lit like dead glamorously and um, there's just nobody in this 20 yard space and Tandy's brother comes fucking steaming out the toilet door where is he I'm gonna fucking kill him right because he's obviously seen his brothers had a cigar put out on him so as he says this and opens the door, I'm walking along the passageway with Sylvan Distan. So he sees me and he's older than Tandy and comes steaming towards me. Obviously, you know, I disarm him relatively quickly. So he's fast to kip. And 
after him, Tandy comes flying out now. So not only have I st stuck a cigar out on him, he sees their kid faster kip on the floor. So loses his head, comes flying at me. So obviously he gets another couple. This Stan and the lads jump in between it. And that's the end of the matter. So Tandy and his brother, the rest of the lads get together and throw Tandy and his brother out the do. You've been acting like fucking cunts all night. You try, the, the light has got fucking put away four hours ago. You've acted the cunt. You shouldn't have been here anyway. You've both been filled in. Get to fuck. So Tandy and his brother are launched out of our players do. Macher and Fowler and that lad, you're all right. I'm like, fucking hell, they have done what done happened there. But it's kicked off. But they're like, just sit there, have a bevy with sound. John Macher and Trevor Sinclair, you're all, every, everything sound, calm down. About two hours after this, the most violent bar brawl I have ever seen in my life, like the OK Corral takes off in this bar. Our goalkeeper for the youth team at the time was a Danish kid called Kevin Ellegaard. Six foot four, six foot five, built like a brick shit. I was taught he was hard as nails. Lovely kid. You wouldn't want to mess with him just on pure bulk alone. Ends up in an argument with someone next minute. This Ellegaard snoozing on the floor. This lad hits him with one dig and he's fast to kip. There's chairs going, bottles. Nicholas and Elkis is, is there with all his mates. The most violent bar fight I've ever seen. The whole bar gets smashed up. I'm nothing to do with it. It had absolutely nothing to do with me. I'm sitting in the corner. I've gone, I best get out of here. I've gone home. So I'm thinking, next day in the Manchester Evening News is this bar fight. Nicholas and Elkis, he's the big star at City. This bar fight. So I'm going, fucking hell, I've got away with that. You know, I've had to fight myself in there with Tandy and his brother, but I've got away with it. So that's the Sunday. Monday, we're back in training. So I've phoned Tandy to say, listen, I'm playing in the first team every week here. You shouldn't have even been out here. I'm not going to fucking... For me, it's the end of it. You've had a crack. You shouldn't have said fire to me. I shouldn't have done that. You've had... That's the end of it. And I was prepared to square it off with the kid. I weren't going to go and say to the manager, which I could have done. Listen, he's a fucking dickhead. He ain't training with us. I'm first team player. So I was going to be dead sad. I get in, unbeknown to me. He's already sold the stories of the papers on a Sunday. <laughs> fucking snitch. Right to the papers on a Sunday. Uh, so it's out now. So yeah, Keegan's he's pulled the me patch in. That one, isn't all he? that none. No, that was Darbo. So that, that came afterwards. So Tandy's gone fully in. And obviously the manager's pulled me in. Keegan, what the fuck's happened? So I've told him what's happened, just as, as I always am. Dead cards on the table. and he, So... Anyway, Tan T Tandy ends up getting loaned out. We're fucked off, and he, he was a bit of a bit of a mad kid. Anyway, he wasn't um, no angel. So now I've, I'm, I've I've started this twenty-two man brawl. Now I've put a cigar out in somebody's eye, and obviously the story about that was incredible. You know the, the fucking traction it made, and then the next one's Darbo.